Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Local Leaders, the podcast. And look, y'all, I've done 251 of these shows now, and I might be more excited about this than all of them. And I was excited about a lot. We have Livingston Parish Sheriff Jason Ard in the studio today. So first of all, welcome to Local Leaders. Oh, thank you, Jim. It's good to be here. I'm excited to uh, to kind of, you know, tell everybody about this career of yours and and god I, look i'm gonna take y'all through a process here a life in law enforcement mm-hmm. really uh 30 years 30 years does it seem like 30 years yeah <laughs> <laughs> it does huh? oh, oh, maybe some, 31 yeah, so, some days uh, <laughs> but I, I really enjoy what i do i still love to go to yeah. work every day and uh, you know when you when you find your calling, you know this is yes. what you're supposed to do. It just uh, you enjoy you know putting a uniform on. You import, you enjoy getting in your truck in the morning, right? And uh, um, you know other than the time I have to get up, yeah, I don't really care. You know <laughs> I'm excited about the day, and every day in my career is different. And never you've have always to do with the same thing. You've always wanted to be a police officer. It seems always, like. always. You know I started in uh, actually in 1989. Wow. As a Dillon Springs cadet, I was 17 yeah. years old, yeah. and I always like to tell the story because the guy works for me today, um, uh, Patrick Nab. Yep, he was a Dillon Springs officer, and I was 17. He had just started; I think he was actually reserved, trying to get on full time. But uh, when I seen him in his uniform, I just you know I was fixated on him, sure. and uh, I hate to even say that about him because he's like, oh yeah, I'm your hero. But, <laughs> but really and truly, he was. You know, when you're when you're that age, you, you kind of looking for that that role model. And yeah. uh, but all he did was one thing: he let me ride in his unit one night to McDonald's, yeah, and back to the to the. Uh, Dillon Springs Police Station, and I just I was on top of the world, yeah. you know. And I still remember putting that cadet uniform on for the first time, looking in the mirror, and 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 I tell this story, and it's so true. The only person in the world <clears throat> that that knew what I felt like at that moment was probably Superman. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And I still feel like that today when I put my uniform on. You know, you put it on, you just you're you're, you're a different person inside it's a it's a sense of pride about you and sure. what you do for the community and uh so you know it's uh it was just a calling from from very young and then of course in 1993 the story goes that hired on by the sheriff's office as a prison yeah. guard yeah and uh and then that started my career and, and look back then i remember and no offense uh you know mr odom graves was a great sheriff but his uniforms were, were baby blue and probably the <laughs> ugliest uniform i've ever put on in my life <laughs> But, you know, I still was proud of it. I was yeah. proud to put it on. I was proud to be a loose and parish deputy. Yeah. And, you know, my competitive personality uh, kind of kicked in as, as I grew up through this office and wanted to do better and wanted to do more. Yeah. And whenever I would hear somebody talk bad about the sheriff's office, I'd take it personal. Sure. And I was like, you know, if, if I got to work two or three nights on my own to catch this bad guy, I'm going to do it. Absolutely. If, uh, you know, I got to come out early to get all these paper served because back then you were everything you had to do paper serving you had to do you know calls uh as a road deputy and sometimes you had to do your own investigations wow <laughs> you know it was just different uh, yeah and but at the end of the day it was uh whenever you're you're where you're supposed to be yeah. things just happen and uh and i and i commend our former sheriff uh, willie grace for giving me opportunity as i grew yeah and and i've worked in every capacity of that office you know uniform patrol and i was uniform patrol supervisor a lot of people may not know this at 25 years old yes so I for that. the last 25 <laughs> years i've been in a leadership role but I remember uh, whenever I was promoted, I think, uh, I know I did, I don't think, but I know that I 
argued with the sheriff a little bit. I was like, uh, me? Yeah. I mean, don't we have some guys that are, you know, older, more seasoned? And he goes, no, there's something about you. You know how to talk to people, and I, I want you to do it. And so I was a night supervisor for, for yeah. several years, and it uh, it was it was different. And I think all through my career, as we go through this, I mean, I, I was actually taught by fire. Yeah, um, the best way to learn. Right. Um, I remember I actually rode on a Monday and a Tuesday night with a training officer. Yeah. Friday night, I was by myself. Wow. Two nights. Yeah. And uh, one night I had to listen. The next night I had to handle all the calls. And then Friday night I was on my home. Oh, wow. And back then it was five deputies that worked the whole parish. Yeah. And one was a supervisor. And, of course, she had four. So it was basically three of us on the west side of the parish, two on the east side. And it was it was pretty pretty challenging. Absolutely. Uh, but you had to have a lot of patience and tongue control. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, look, you get one of these uh, – these, Big old country boys from Livingston mm. and uh, had a lot to drink, and you don't talk to him, right? It's just you and him. Yeah. Your nearest backup may be 30 minutes away, so you learn how to talk to people. Yeah. And back then, they only gave you a, a pair of handcuffs and a gun, and that's about all you had. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. And uh, so I even we didn't even have portable radios. Uh, really? So when you would drive up to a call at night, there was two things you did. You rolled your window down, you took your microphone and hung it out the window, yeah. and then you turned your, your parking lights on. And I remember my training officer telling me that, and I was like, so what's the deal with the parking lights, you know? Yeah. He goes, well, that may be the only way we find you. Yeah. And he, I said, well, why are you hanging a mic out the window? He said, because I may be, you may have to crawl back. Whoa. And I'm like, okay. And uh, But it was, it was uh, I think it helped mold me to who I am because that was one of the things I always kept in the back of my mind. Yeah. No, uh, you have to control your temper. You have to control your your, um, your. You have to have patience. You have to control your your your. What I call your verbal <laughs> judo. You got You have to control that. Yeah. In a, in a way of of being able to talk to people and somebody's really angry and really upset at you and so those are the things that uh, I learned early on in, in my career and and you know then that got me to from there to investigations yeah i did that for a while i really loved that position and then the sheriff pulled me out and said look i really want you to go to the training center yeah so then i went to the training center he saw and something so in you. he did and uh one of the things that a lot of people don't know about me is the uh i had a i had a huge fear that was actually holding my career back and um i was very shy I, i've heard that <laughs> and it blows my mind to this day. yeah so when i was a road supervisor they used to make us go and do the uh, neighborhood watch yeah. for these neighborhoods. So I always would bring a deputy with me and it would make me feel a little more comfortable. Yeah. Sure. And then as long as everybody was standing up, I yeah. was okay to talk. Yeah. So I'd always gather in like in a, like we were in a huddle talking, but if people were sitting down, it would make me nervous for some reason. Yeah. So, um, I was not good at that. Yeah. I did not speak well. Yeah. And so, he knew that I needed to go through these training classes and become an instructor. And, and look, the worst people in the world to try to train is law enforcement. <laughs> these guys know no everything, way, and they're gonna they're gonna and they're gonna analyze everything. Yes. Uh, so I, you know, I go through my my career as a training officer, and and uh, during that time frame, from being a training officer and backing up a little bit, I think it was '97. I was coming out of being a supervisor. We created a SWAT team. Uh, we didn't have one at the time. And Baton Rouge, uh, unfortunately, had lost some of their uh, narcotic officers and in, in some of the, some shootouts. Yeah, yeah. And we were having a, a, a little bit of uptick in narcotic issues here in Livingston, being the bedroom community we was back then and, and still today. And we just knew we needed to do something different. Yeah. And so I created that. And uh, and and to know today was, uh, I mean, we we win awards. And 2005, so. y'all were the top. SWAT team in Louisiana. We, yeah, 2005. Yeah. So the, actually, the last competition I was involved in. Yeah. And I figured I'd go out with a bang. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, my shoulders started hurting. <laughs> and my age started showing a little bit. Oh, but anyway, it was, uh, it, was, it was nice to know that we did that and, and watch those guys perform today. So the difference is this. I went to a, a you know, sometimes I get to go to some of these calls with these guys, but I went to one not long ago. And I watched him take one of our drones and clear this house. Yeah, and I was just truly amazed. And you know, you know, you have these this equipment. We were, in, you know, I'm involved with them. I watch them train to be able to see some of that from what we do today to what we had to 
do with what we had back then, right? Absolutely. Tremendous. And these guys are very, very well advanced. And, um, and we, look, I, I want the top training for these guys. And uh, I know that it was uh, limited with us because of our budget sure. restrictions. And, you know, Mr. Odom Gray, as I'm talking about him again, he did something that was phenomenal back in probably, I think it was somewhere in the 80s, yeah. where he passed a half cent sales tax. Yeah. He was probably a half cent from Kmart in Dillon yeah. Springs, right? Yeah. And it was a half cent of basically nothing. Right. But it was something. And today, that half cent has turned into something big. Yeah. And it has allowed us to be able to serve and protect our community a lot better. Yes. I can buy better equipment for these guys. I can put them in uh, vehicles that are more reliable. And we can actually, you know, buy the top of the line stuff that these guys need to do their job every day. And and I think that's why, you know, when we get into these numbers, probably in a little bit, we're able to do the job we do. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, if uh, if you're from Livingston Parish and you're not proud of what we have here, mm -hmm. uh, you got to be crazy. Because <laughs> I'm going to tell you, you would... Uh, you know, every just about everything is state of the art. You just built a beautiful training center, and we'll get into that. Um, but I'm very proud of of uh, of our sheriff's department overall, and the equipment, and the training, mm -hmm. and uh, and all of those things that go into enforcing the law. Um, you mentioned that you started off as a prison guard, and you kind of worked your way through those ranks. Uh, and it was quick. It was t almost two year stints between mm -hmm. uh, the time you were a guard to the time you became a road deputy. That was about three years. Then you became a supervisor in the night shift. That was two years. Uh, a couple years later, you moved into investigations. Mm -hmm. And uh, at this time, you're, you know, 27 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just amazing. When I was 27, you didn't want me investigating no crime. <laughs> uh, believe me, yeah. <laughs> I was I was still figuring out life. But you were on a roll, and you mentioned Willie Graves and and uh, of course historic sheriff here. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you did you helped develop that first SRT team, uh, and then at some point you were promoted to chief deputy of operations. Mm -hmm. Major deal. Yes. Um, what was that like? You, you know, uh, it was it was it was a very rewarding time for me, but it was uh, it was a sense of accomplishment because in my career, in my focus, I just wanted to be an investigator, yeah, and maybe a, a supervisor one day, maybe the chief detective one day, and that's where my vision was at, right? And it was he seen something in me that was a little different, yeah. and so. He guided me in those right directions and gave me those opportunities. And it was right around uh, Hurricane Katrina in 2005 that I think uh, – and, and throughout your career, whenever you work, and, you know, a lot of people say, you know, how did you get noticed by your sheriff? And I said, well, I was a hard worker, and, and it takes you a little while, but then you go back and you start thinking. And somebody just the other day told a story that was the, the reason I became a supervisor on the street. Yeah. One story. Yeah. And, um, and, and it was – pretty unique incident so my supervisor actually was was out that night and he asked me to kind of take the reins or whatever and i was like yeah. okay whatever yeah you know, sure. he's just trying to make me feel good he probably told everybody else the same thing yeah uh, but he did he he told me to do that and i picked up a guy that was a uh that was going to ride with me now he was reserved and i think he'd been riding maybe one or two nights i picked him up on south walker and as we're coming up to the red light and walker they called in a shooting in progress, uh, which at the time was the old Junior Food Mart. Now I think it's on the run. Yeah. Right at the red light across yeah. from Walgreens. No right where it's at. They have a shooting. Suspects hit 190 and headed east toward Livingston. Well, I'm right there. Yeah. So I get, and there happens to be a volunteer fireman that's following them. So as he's calling in his location, it goes to dispatch because he's on the phone with them. Right. And then they're telling me over the radio. And we're about a mile behind these guys the whole time. Yeah. It's uh, four black guys. Yeah. And uh, they ran the plate, called it in somewhere out of Baton Rouge. Yeah. Uh, we've identified as, as the shooters. Yeah. We follow them up. To, uh, they get up to Walker North right past Springfield Road. First house on the left, they pull in the driveway. We get a 911 call. They're trying to break in the door. Mm. of this lady who's home by herself with her kids as i pass this this residence and i'm i pass it on purpose because i can see them to kind of get a lay of the land yep one of them's at the door just like she said 
and there's three standing in the yard. One of them has a gun in his hand, mm -hmm. and I turn around and come back with, okay, we're fixing to get into a shootout here. Yeah. And so uh, it was kind of funny because the guy went to, uh, was riding with me and tried to grab my shotgun. I said, no, sir, that's mine. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> you take this guy. I, I got the shotgun. But uh, but anyway, we drove up. The guys hit the woods. I set up a perimeter, uh, went on for about four hours. We wound up ca catching all four of them. Yeah. And I remember the sheriff coming out there and keeping in touch with me every night. And uh wasn't long after that he promoted me. I'm telling that story because it wasn't long after Hurricane Katrina where he recognized something. Yes. And um, I, we've been through a lot of disasters, and it's just something I have figured out how to, to run those and how to keep our parish safe. Right. And so it wasn't long after that he told me, so look, I want you to come to courthouse and administrative and I'll, uh, kind of be just an assistant. This was before he, he actually promoted me. Yeah. So that I told you earlier, I've always learned by fire, right? Right. So just imagine – you're basically running the SRT team most of the time and training deputies. The next day you're at the office in a suit and tie. And two days later he tells you, okay, the news media will be here in a minute. You're in the new public information officer as well. Oh, wonderful. Uh, okay. So yeah. you just had to learn. I'm sure some of those interviews were horrible. Right. Uh, but I had to learn how to do that. And then, of course, in 06, uh, which is – Short distance later, is uh, the, it was actually January of six. He brought me in and said, "Hey, you're the new chief of operations." Wow! And so that's where my career in my administrative started in, at that, that moment. So, yeah. uh, and then we had Hurricane Gustav, and right after Gustav is when he promoted me to chief deputy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Second so, in command of the, the entire mm -hmm. sheriff's office. That's How right. old were you at that point? Oh, Thirty-four, maybe. Wow. Well, I was 38 when I ran for sheriff, so it was I think I was chief deputy for about 3 years maybe, maybe maybe 4. Right? Yeah. So um and you know that was right after I went to the FBI National Academy and graduated, came out, we had goosed off hit right when I got back and yeah. and you know that's where I got the vision for our new training center. Yeah, um, and a lot of people don't know the story, but uh -huh. the, during goosed off, we have a detention center that has 647 beds. We had just completed it. Yeah. No inmates had moved in yet. Yeah. So Gustav hits, and, you know, of course, this is devastating our parish and all around us. Well, we became a hub. So immediately we started housing first responders in this detention center. Yeah. And we wound up with 600 staying in this detention center. And during that time frame, I remember having that conversation with the sheriff and, and a couple other people saying, we need something like that. We need, like, a rescue center. And so I started working on that year after year after year, and Garrett Graves, Cassidy, and it just kept falling through. Wow. And so in 2019, I uh, met, sat down with uh, Jamie Felder, who was my CPA at the time, and said, look, you know, we got to make this happen. She said, well, you can afford to bond some money. We're just going to have to tighten some things up and uh, may not be able to give, you know, pay raises for a little while, but, you know, we, we need this facility. So I prayed about it like I do everything and said, you know what, we're going to do this. So we went through the architect work or what have you. We basically designed a $12 million building. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jamie was like, well, I hate to break it to you, but you can probably <laughs> afford about $8 million. Right. And I was like, okay. So we bonded about, I think it was 8.5. Yeah. And we bonded the money. And so we get ready to send it out for bid. And whenever we get ready to send it out for bid, this is in 20, uh, March of 2020. Yeah. Everybody knows that date, yeah. March of 2020, yeah. COVID hit. world stop. Yep. yep. So COVID hits. Of course, these contractors are pushing back. We don't know what this is going to be. Nobody did, right? The first right. couple of months, we had no Nobody clue what did. we were dealing with. And so just I had this gut feeling, and, and you know, Jamie and I kept talking, said, you know, we need to push this through. Let's just go with it. And we did. Yeah. And lo and behold, the low bid comes back at 5.2. And we're like, hey, whoa, what? <laughs> you know, hey, hate it for the contractors, but yeah. this is really good for the sheriff's office. Yeah. And so, and the citizens, yeah. and the citizens, right? So we we move forward, and uh, this this company starts working on it, and then we start moving forward this training facility, and you know, and and, and, and during COVID, because we didn't know a whole lot, um, you know, there were some things that we needed to do, and so one thing that I, I have figured out. And along with some of my, my staff is, uh, is, is FEMA is probably the most aggravating people in the world to have to deal with. Sure. But once you learn them and once you know what they expect and you can communicate with them, you can actually, uh, 
get a little bit better road map and, in, uh-huh. and paint a better picture. So what we did at that time was it was important for us to set up like eateries for these deputies because what I didn't know was, well, you know, if Jim's my deputy and you go take a call at this house, or, I mean, we don't know what this uh, this pandemic is yet. Yeah. Are you going to get something on a uniform? Are you going to bring it back to your, you know, your family? Uh, so, um, you know, we said, okay, you know, may- maybe – Maybe we set up some eateries and stuff. So we did. So we called a lot of mom and pop restaurants throughout our parish, and we set up an account with them and told these deputies, look, I'm going to feed you three meals a day. I don't want you to go home and get a sandwich. I don't want you to go home at all with your family. I want you to stay on the road. I want you to, you know, take your calls, and we're going to have these eateries set up. And, of course, there's an amount. Like, you can't be over eight bucks. Yeah. Uh, but we set these up, you know, with – Dukes and Don Seafood, uh, Children's Grocery, um, G and J's in Livingston, and several other little mom and pop restaurants, and I just wanted to make sure that you know we were doing the right thing. Beyond that, we actually I called Scooter King, and I said, "Look, if I get these deputies to come to my training facility and they you know take showers there and they take the uniforms, can you you know clean them every day and bring them back?" He said, "Absolutely." Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com renew to learn more. Don't get your tinsel in a tangle. Plato's Closet in North Charleston and West Ashley can help make your holiday easier with cash for clothes. Sell us your gently used trendy styles to earn cash on the spot. We need your denim, dressy clothes, sweaters, boots, and more. Plato's Closet buys and sells sustainable styles. Earn cash to make holiday spending less stressful. Don't get your tinsel in a tangle this year. Simply get cash for your cool clothes at Plato's Closet. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. So I did all this stuff and we documented it. And and it was a lot of other things that we had to keep documenting. We stayed in touch with FEMA. Well, come come around 2021, very unexpected, we get a check. Yeah. $12 million. All right. And we had no clue we were getting it. It was like, whoa, wow, you know? Yeah. So, I get $20 in the mail. I didn't yeah. expect. I'm jumping up and so, down. And, 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 I, and look, I give kudos to my staff because they work really hard with that. And, and we just – we had a good plan and we, we – we thought about it. We we did everything we could, and there was a lot of things that came up, you know, during COVID. A lot of different challenges. A lot of these things that you know people were dealing with with these businesses, and uh, and I'm glad we were able to help them. You um, helped them. them probably kept a lot of them in business, uh, and, and you kept know, them from going out of business. I have. Uh, I know Scooter King was told me a couple of times that you know, thank you, you would have never yeah. survived if you wouldn't have did what you did, and and and. Honestly, sitting here today, I, that wasn't my plan to keep businesses going. I'm not going to try to take credit, but it was when you when you have a vision and you have a plan, you follow those kind of things, and you pray about stuff, you're going to be led in the right direction, and that's what we did. Yes. And we were blessed, and other people were blessed during that time frame. Absolutely. Uh, when a lot of businesses shut down, closed, and never reopened, we were able to keep businesses open. And, you know, it, it, it's just it was a great thing to be able to do that. It really, it, yeah, and you hit the nail on the head when you said, um, you know, we really didn't know back then exactly. We had no idea if I breathe on this person, am I going to kill him? You right, know, we didn't right. know that, and uh, and so everything was on the fly. And you uh, being over the sheriff's office, one employee could get the entire sheriff's office sick, right? Mm-hmm. And so there's all these considerations. I could not imagine. Uh, and when I think back on, it, you know, when I was diving into your career, one thing that I can honestly say is it is it, there's just about nothing you haven't experienced from from the 2016 flood <sighs> to covid to all the other storms, ice storms, you mm-hmm. name it. Uh, you've been through it. That's a huge thing because now you know how to react to it. And and right. And all of those sorts of things, that's. Very, very important to me, and I'm sure very important to anybody who is uh, looking for a le- someone to lead whatever whatever it is, whether it's a business, a sheriff's office. Right. Um, it, there's just not a whole lot you hadn't experienced. 
Unfortunately, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it runs the it yeah. absolutely runs the gamut, and it's impressive. Yeah, it's uh, you know, like I said, it's it's uh, the, the probably the, the most challenging that I've dealt with. The two top things that I've dealt with that was the most challenging was the flood yeah. and probably COVID because you know COVID again it was just one of those things that wasn't um, obviously wasn't expected. Didn't really know a whole lot. I wasn't a fan of the mask. Yeah. Um, um, I, I remember kind of look, being looked down upon by um, some state people whenever they came to the office and all of them had masks on but me yeah. at a press conference. I <laughs> uh, just didn't. You know, I said, look, man, how's yeah. this little mask going to keep me from doing anything? Yeah. And really and truly at the time, give, give, give me COVID so I can get it over with, right? Because right. we, we first found out, well, if you get COVID, then you're done with it. Yep. And then was it a year later, we found out, well, you could get it twice. Yeah. It <laughs> and then there's different variations of it. <sighs> Uh, but you know, it was just one of those things, and I, I was proud of our parish at that time, yeah, um, because of the unknown. But we were able to stay afloat and be able to continue to see these somebody because there was a lot of businesses struggling during that time. Yeah, there was. But I was glad to see that people try to keep them busy, busy, and and we had to learn how to do things That's differently. Right. That's right. Um, and came out on I think on top at the end. You sure did, and and I want to talk about just quickly some. Uh, you know, some certifications and things that you've received over the years that uh, look in, you know, and this is something important to mention folks. If you, if you want to look at the full list, because let me tell you, it's like the Dead Sea Scrolls. He's got a lot of certifications, awards, training certificates, and all these sorts of things, of, as you would expect on a 30-year career. But there's a few I highlighted that I did want to mention and talk about. One of them that uh, that really spoke to me, and uh, primarily because I'm also a graduate of this program, was Leadership Livingston. You're a mm-hmm. supporter of business. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, it, the Chamber of Commerce does some really great things for our community, and you were a Leadership Livingston graduate mm-hmm. and probably saw parts of his parish. You didn't even know, you know, even his share. Well, you probably knew they existed, but most, well, you know, most su- of us didn't. Surprisingly, I, did, I didn't know all of it. Yeah. Um, and, and it was very, I don't know, it, I really enjoyed it. Leadership Livingston. Yeah, I was that was the, actually the first class uh, I got to go through, and it was kind of funny because Leighton Ricks uh, and myself was kind of newly elected. Yeah. So it, we had a competition who would go to the most <laughs> classes kind of deal. But you know the, those the field trips and seeing like the original courthouse in Springfield was a big thing for me, and yeah. I knew it was there. And I and I know back when I worked the streets, I probably went by it a couple of times. Sure. But forget about little things like that. And then some of the businesses that we that would come and speak, and some of the leadership here in the parish was uh, was really entertaining to me. Yeah. And 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 not only that, I love the network of yeah. it. And uh, and since then, I became a, a really good uh, partner uh, with the chamber. You really uh, have. Chamber. And uh, they've been good friends of me, and and yeah. so uh, although my golf tournament is better than theirs, yeah, yeah I would agree. Yeah, <laughs> I was at both. <laughs> uh, they have a really good golf tournament too, and they put on some really good uh, uh, educational classes, and some right. of their leadership classes are really good. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. And uh, uh, incidentally, Leighton Rex did a podcast with him just a few days ago, and mm-hmm. he, uh, you know, one of the things that he went out of his way to credit was uh, how working with you during these disasters because you work closely uh, mm-hmm. with him during those uh, really, really was a benefit for him. And mm-hmm. he was very complimentary of you for that uh, as, as I expected, but uh, we'll move on a little bit to you, some of your certifications. You know, he didn't even mention this one, but Denham Springs Kiwanis club peace officer of the year in 2000. Oh wow! That's a big deal. It's <laughs> a big deal. That's that's uh, as I say, back in the gap a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I was uh, very honored to to receive that award, and I was actually a detective at the time. Yeah. And that was right before I moved into the training uh, training center, uh, and I still remember the state trooper was uh, O'Neill Wascom. Yeah. They got along with me, and the de- uh, the Dental Springs police officer was Paul Goldman, who actually yes. worked for me. He's one of my school resource officers. Yep. So yeah, I seen I seen that picture not long ago. <laughs> wow, very good. Well, uh, you you know, two thousand five, uh, Lake Charles Police Department Gratitude Award for assistance during Hurricane Rita. This one spoke to me, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, Twenty sixteen, we flooded like everybody else uh, around us, and uh, ended up on Highway sixteen right there by uh, Carter's Grocery and all that, and. Uh, 
thousand other people on that road and we're on an island. Uh, you can't get in or out. And uh, after a few days, we started seeing law enforcement, but it was from all over the state of Louisiana. Mm-hmm. And uh, Carter's, uh, fortunately, could still open and close. They were, you know, limited on what they could do, but God bless them because they were uh, they were going to make it happen as far as people being able to get food. Mm-hmm. Um, one day I talked to one of the officers. I went over there, and, and he was from Lake Charles, Mark Unit. And I said, uh, I said, man, y'all must, uh, y'all must be making a ton of money coming all the way out here, you know, protecting us. And look, they were looting everywhere. You mm-hmm. know how it was. Right, and right. and uh, he said, oh man, we're down here because we want to be. And uh, I'm gonna tell you that touched me. Mm-hmm. And you're the same way. As a matter of fact, so much so that you were honored with that gratitude award from the Lake Charles Police Department for your work during Hurricane Rita. That's a big right. deal, man. That's uh, you know, that's what we. That's just what. We did, and yeah. uh, it was it was crazy because we've been all over. Uh, there's usually not a disaster in Louisiana from probably 95, 97 till today that I hadn't been boots on the ground anywhere in Louisiana. And some, right. In some cases, Texas and Florida because, you know, you, you go help those that need help because they help us. Yes. And so— It's a brotherhood. It, it is. It's, it's definitely a brotherhood, and—, and the flood was uh was crazy but i can remember it like it was yesterday whenever uh the friday it got to be that evening every single person that was uh, with the ability to drive yeah was gone from yeah. our train it was, a, it was when we had a double wide trailer and i was sitting on the, the porch of it i was the only person there because everybody else was out rescuing so we had to have somebody stay at the at the center of course i'm on the phone trying to make sure we can get military i mean i see this been watching it all morning that friday morning and seeing this uh this this uh mother nature just wreak havoc upon us yes and so i'm sitting there and just you know god i don't know what we're going to do you know we all the deputies i have i got volunteers showing up and they're like i don't have a boat and i just said look go here go here and I'm sure somebody would be there with a boat, just rescue people. Yeah. And that's what we did. Our community just came together. But um, it was right before dark, and I see this truck coming up the driveway. It's not marked, and it's uh, got a little bat toe on the back of it. And these four guys get out, and uh, they said, hey, Sheriff, how are you today? I said, well, I've been better. <laughs> uh, they said, well, we're uh, – and I can't remember the deputy's name. I should. But uh, he said, we're from Webster Parish, Yeah. and we came down here to help you. Wow. And I said, okay. He said, yeah, we worked all night. I said, well, I don't really have any words for you to sleep, but um, I can probably get you some cots over here or whatever. We, he said, no, sir, we didn't come to sleep. We came to work. Ooh, I love that. Oh, look, got goosebumps. So, I know. I get it. Wow. Up. So five days later, I see these guys again, and they've been just like me. They hadn't had any sleep. Yeah. And every now and then their sheriff would call and check on them. And yeah. so that's what inspired me to run for the association president. Yeah. And I, and I've had people, some of my peers, some of my, my buddy sheriffs, like, you know, you ought to run, you ought to do this. And I'm like, no, eh, I'd rather just be right here at Livingston where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. They did so much for us. And I don't think there was an agency in Louisiana that wasn't here in Livingston Parish, either Livingston or some in East Baton Rouge, but they were here in our parish protecting and serving our community. How could I not give back? And the only way I could give back was to maybe do that. So I ran for – it's uh, actually Sergeant of Arms. I won the election. I was voted in by the other 63 sheriffs. And every year they give you a grade and they actually let you go to the next position until you ultimately become the president. Yeah. And, of course, Jason Art has the best luck in the world. If everybody wants to know the year I was a president, it was 2020 yeah. and 2021. <laughs> uh, but it was uh, the experience that I have gained. I didn't realize that I would be able to give back the way I did. And lo and behold, I took office, actually swore in in 2020, uh, July of 2020. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com renew to learn more. 
And if everybody remembers the biggest hurricane, Laura, yeah. hits Lake Charles like a month later. Yeah. And so uh, I'm the president, and it just took out, you know, Cameron Parish and Calcasieu Parish and just goes all the way up to Arkansas. Yeah. And it was so, um, I guess, rewarding to me to be able to give back to those sheriffs. And and after all this was said and done and the smoke's kind of cleared up, I was out uh, getting interviewed by the secretary at the association and she said, uh, so, Sheriff, what is your what is your goal as the president this year? I said, my goal's done. You can send me to the house. <laughs> you know, I <laughs> wanted it. to do for them what they'd done for me, yes. and, and I got to accomplish that in the first month. Yeah. And, you know, it was a very um, emotional time for me because that's what I wanted to give back, and yeah. that was my expertise. I said, I can handle any disaster. And so um, to be able to help my fellow sheriffs, to guide them with, you know, some of our expertise with dealing with FEMA, uh, you know, and, and those type of deals. And and one of the biggest things that happened, I think it was two days before, was everybody remembers the flood and me going out and I actually kind of got in a little bit of a spat with FEMA over some trailers. Yeah. For yeah. my deputies. Yeah. And I think sure. I bought like thirty five to forty trailers for these deputies to house mm-hmm. them and followed their guidelines. And at the end, uh, they told me, you know, you have to just keep waiting, keep waiting. I said, I'm not waiting. We're going to move forward, and I'll go through the proper process. I know what I'm doing is right. And, of course, they fought us for years on getting us reimbursement. And then Mm -hmm. they realized somewhere along the way that they're going to have to somehow give me reimbursement. Well, my hat's off to Garrett Graves because he worked really hard on this as well. And so right when that hurricane hit, we received our check. Yeah. And uh, not only did he help us get that, but he also changed the law. Yeah. To where we can, uh, us and leaders in law enforcement, your sheriff, your chief, they, we can make those decisions. As you should. Based on, you know, the safety of our deputies and, and the safety of our community. So to be able to get that and have that law changed and, and be able to put that stuff into place and, and to play during that hurricane while these agencies were going through so much it just it was really rewarding to know that we have actually changed the game for them to be able to get them look the only thing I, the only thing that i was focused on is i didn't want these deputies to leave right you know i didn't want another hurricane katrina i mean i have a lot of people here from saint bernard yeah and it's because they lost everything sure and i have some deputies here that work for saint bernard sheriff's office some yeah. of the best deputies i have yeah. and i just didn't want that to happen here in Livingston. You know, we have something special here. Uh, I'm, I love my community. I love what we do. And so all that came to play. And again, you know, if, you, if you're doing what, what God calls you to do, you know, Jim, this is what happens. That's right. And it was just amazing to be able to turn around and, and, and have us bless communities that turn around and blessed us. I agree 100%. Um, Livingston Parish Public Schools, they mm-hmm. uh, they actually awarded you in 2017 for outstanding service and dedication to those local area schools. And just quickly on that, uh, you know, you kept our schools safe, in my opinion. We thank God we haven't had these these issues that you know nationally that people see, right. uh, and and uh, you've done a good job of that. We have SROs in our in our yep. schools, and look, I put three kids through public school, and uh, and of course, as parents, we're all parents, including right, you, right. and uh, we send our kids off, and and you know, you you hope and pray every day that nothing nothing horrible with relation to your schools happen, but uh, you kept them safe, and you got awarded for it. Yeah. Well, in, in twenty twelve, the first thing that I did after I became sheriff was bring our first school resource school resource officer to the sheriff's office and um he actually still works here today his name was aaron bond he was actually a east baton rouge deputy and i brought him over here and put him in the watson area and uh jimmy let's see let me get the name right john watson his brother is the mayor which is jimmy watson yes. i call him yes. jimmy durbin every now and he gets mad at me <laughs> uh but uh <laughs> Jim. So so John was a superintendent, and he and I sat down, and we came up with an agreement to um, to split the salary. Yeah. 
and bring the first school resource officer in, and that kind of built where we are today. We actually now have 16 in our schools, and two of those are Dental Springs uh, Police Department. Yeah. And um, my hat's off to Gerard Landry. I believed in the program, yes. too. Uh, and at the time, it was uh, Chief Walmack, I believe. And, and so we um, – and I think they already had a school resource officer uh, whenever we started, so they were kind of ahead of the ball game. Yeah. And so anyway, it was really good to, to, to bring them. But what I really wanted the school resource officers to do, it wasn't necessarily a safety thing. Of course, that comes natural. Sure. But it's also how can we get in these schools and kind of mentor these kids? And uh, and we've seen so many stories where I've had deputies uh, have some maybe some unruly kids that for some reason were attracted to that uniform. And and these guys, I, I've stories of them helping these kids read. Yeah. And staying after and making sure their and their reading comes up, their grades get better, and so and also identifying bullying or victims of bullying and, and, and building that relationship with your kids where they can report crime or, or you know drug use. So unfortunately, we have some of that in the schools, yeah. and so those were those were kind of my my goal and what I was trying to accomplish. Well, like you said earlier, I've had two kids graduate the public school system here. Yeah. Both of my kids graduated Walker. And when some of those school shootings were going down, and, and at the time I tried to actually pass a, uh, a tax, and nobody likes to hear about that, but it's true. I mean, I, my vision was, I mean, we need to get a deputy in every school. Yeah. I have a daughter going to school right now, and I look when I pass by that school, which after them shootings, I pass by that school every day. Yeah. Yeah. I made sure I passed by there and looked to see her vehicle and what I would see when I would see a walker officer at that school made me feel better. Yes. And so I said, you know, we just, we got to do more. And that was my inspiration. And of course, the people spoke. They didn't what they wanted to do, but they still wanted us to do something. And so we just went back to the drawing board and said, we come up with another plan, approached the school system and said, look, you know, if y'all go in half, I'm willing to do 60 yeah. 40. And let's put some money aside in a budget and let's create a school security detail where these deputies are off of work and they can actually go sit at the school watch over our school they can actually stay in touch with what's going on in our court system and a lot of people don't understand this but every day when we have court family court and there's the custody battle over kids sometimes there's confrontation in the courtroom that winds up in front of the principal Mm. somewhere on our campus and which becomes very dangerous yes and so you don't want to get between a father and his kids, and you don't want to get between a mother and their kids. Yeah. And so we're usually those people. And so those kind of things happen. So looking at all that, we created this program, and it just took off. I've been very fortunate because I think I have the number is 22 new reserves, and some most of them came from Baton Rouge City that yeah. actually were retiring, very capable, and came over here and they worked at school detail. So I got really highly trained guys. Yeah. Um, and it, it just it worked out. And so now on any given day, you probably have anywhere between uh, 30 or 40 deputies watching our schools. Now, a lot of people don't understand the makeup of our school system. Uh-huh. We have 52 sites, Yes. 47 with kids every day. That's a big responsibility. Yeah. And to be able to ride around this parish and see these units at these schools, I don't want these kids to feel like they're in prison. Right. But I want them to feel, and, and the parents to feel that their kids are safe and they can focus on getting their education. Yeah. And, uh, and look, nothing's 100%. I'm yeah. not sitting here telling you we 100% got your kids covered because I would just be lying. Sure. Um, but 90%. We got it. Yeah. And I feel like that, uh, you know, we're doing the best we can. And, yeah. and you you, did, you just can't predict human behavior. That's if right. we could, we wouldn't have any incidents. That's right. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'm very proud to be able to have a partner partnership with the school system. And one of the things that we didn't realize we would be able to, to do was truancy is a problem. Yeah. And the school system is constantly trying to get us to help them. And it's just, you know, from personnel issues on our side to their side, but we didn't realize that doing this would give us extra funds because obviously we can't put, you know, we hadn't been able to have 50 deputies every day. Sure. But it's actually have, we budgeted for that. So now we're able to actually pay these school resource officers when they get off of, of, of work, extra duty to go out and do these truancy compliance Very checks. Good. And we've That's seen huge. a huge change already in yeah. our attendance with these children. Yeah. And that's what it was. That's what it's about. So that's right. 
I'm glad to have that partnership with our school system. They want they want what's best for our kids as well, and uh, and I'm just want to focus on their safety, yeah. and and try to make sure we create a a school system that is not only a good education, but but it's safe, a yeah. safe campus, a safe place to go to school and get your education. I have to worry about what's going on, um, you know, in the neighborhood next door and that kind of stuff. So I think we have a good a good. Uh, a plan in place and it's working and I hope it continues to work. I agree a hundred percent. And, uh, and we'll move on. And one thing with you was, uh, you've got a lot of training with the FBI. Mm -hmm. Good. You know, I would imagine their, their courses are pretty, pretty good. Um, (laughs) as a matter of fact, you've, you've done a lot of leadership training with them. Uh, you were an FBI national Academy graduate back in 2008. Mm -hmm. Uh, U.S. Department of Justice, anti-terrorism training, uh, something you wouldn't think, you know, you would have an issue with here in Livingston Parish, and and uh, maybe that's because you've got some training in that area, but uh, got that in 2012, FBI Academy Law Enforcement Executive Training, uh, 2014, uh, Homeland Security Training, Tactical Operations in 2015, so you you know I told y'all it was like the Dead Sea Scrolls and it is he just a lot of certifications a lot of training and experience matters experience is important leaders people that are leading your organization their uh, their subordinates underneath them are looking for that they're mm-hmm. looking for someone that knows how to lead and those certifications will get you there uh, you're president of the uh, Louisiana Sheriff Association as we mentioned from July of 2020 to July of 2021. Mm-hmm. So you're even, uh, you know, in a, in a manner of speaking, leading other other sheriffs and, you right. know, in that organization and committing of your time and all those sorts of things. Uh, board member, I liked this one, for the Louisiana <laughs> Association of Challenged Adults in Walker. Mm-hmm. Uh, great organization. It is a great organization. Great families are involved in that and, and you know, anything we can do to help our community. And it, it takes, you know, i got a lot of boards that I serve on. I try sure. to... Uh, do the best I can. You know, you can't serve on them all, but there's yeah. some that actually really touch my heart, and I want to do everything I can to try to help them out. Hundred percent, lifetime member of the NRA. Yeah, well, love that. Not, hell yeah! Look, my grandfather told me a long time ago. He said, uh, "Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan." but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. Don't get your tinsel in a tangle. Plato's Closet in North Charleston and West Ashley can help make your holiday easier with cash for clothes. Sell us your gently used trendy styles to earn cash on the spot. We need your denim, dressy clothes, sweaters, boots, and more. Plato's Closet buys and sells sustainable styles. Earn cash to make holiday spending less stressful. Don't get your tinsel in a tangle this year. Simply get cash for your cool clothes at Plato's Closet. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. Give to two organizations, and you actually give to both of them. Uh, the NRA never, mm-hmm. never, always support the NRA, and always support St. Jude. Mm-hmm. And you do both of those as well. As a matter of fact, chipping in for St. Jude, you're a sponsor for that, right? Uh, and you help with that. But I want to talk about the Christmas Crusade for a second. Mm-hmm. Big deal. It is uh, Christmas Crusade is is a huge deal, and it's been around for many many years. It actually was started under Sheriff Odom Graves yeah. and carried on by Sheriff Wooded Graves, and then of course uh, we carried on that tradition because it's such an impact to our community. A lot of people really don't understand what impact it is, but there's a lot of families every year that would not have Christmas if it wasn't for this program. Yeah, and we're linked up with a lot of our churches and a lot of other nonprofit organizations. I know Mighty Moms is kind of a partner yeah. with us in some yeah. of those. And it's just something that we, we, we like to do. And unfortunately, in our line of business, we don't get to do a lot of positive stuff uh, sometimes. Sure. Uh, other than in people's eyes, we get to chase the bad guys and put them in jail and bring yeah. justice. And that's what our job is. But these deputies see so many bad things. Amen. And there's so many families that are suffering. And these, de- these deputies go in these homes and... To be in Christmas time is a big thing for them, yeah. and if you've never followed us, I, I want you to 
please go back and look in the past of what we've done for this community with the Christmas Crusade. But what I want you to focus on is we have some pictures of the day we deliver these toys yeah. and look at the units yeah. and the and the vehicles. And we're deputies that are off duty yes. coming out to be able to, to deliver these toys to these families. And just so you know how many, it's anywhere from four to 600, normally on average about 600 families, uh, 600 locations that we're going to be at that morning, and we usually have everything delivered between 7 and 12, uh, 12 o'clock. Wow. Okay, so in about a six-hour period. And it's just so um, – it's just a great day. Yeah. Uh, but it also is something that we, we work on. This is not a – something we work on for two weeks. This is a year-round process. And right. my wife, Erica, masterminds this program. <laughs> yes. And she – you know, we were talking about it yesterday. She said, you know, we need to have a meeting and – of course, I'm in the middle of an election, and I'm still the sheriff, and I'm like, uh, okay, uh, I'll, I'll make time, but, but really me. and truly, it, it <laughs> takes a lot of time. Yeah. So we have an average of about between 1,200 and 1,600 kids right. that we have to shop for. Uh, so her and I do our Christmas very early because yeah. we don't have time to Christmas shop once right. Crusade starts, and it, it starts now. Yeah. And she's already pre-ordering, talking to you know different local businesses and trying to get uh, our toys ordered. And it was kind of funny, is every year she sends out an email, she just sent it out about two weeks ago, asking parents, because now my kids, I have one married, yeah. and he just gave me my first grandchild, a little boy yeah. named Miles, All right. very happy. He came home a couple of weeks ago. He was premature, but he's doing great. He's healthy. Yeah. Uh, he's born with more hair than me. Yeah, a lot more hair than you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, so, uh, but he's a beautiful, beautiful kid. And my daughter will be graduating southeastern in December. Uh, oh, she wow. wanted to go an extra semester because it's cheap for her, right? Mm. No, 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 no uh, fun intended with for dad. So, yeah. But anyway, um, I get that. Believe me. Yeah. So our kids are older, and so she sends out this email to all the deputies that have kids, and hey, what's the hot item? Yeah. Like what are your what is your kids wanting for Christmas? And it's important for us to know that because I don't want Jim Chapman's kids not to have what the neighbor's kids have. Yeah. You know, we need to know what's important. Sure. So she keeps up with all that stuff and then, you know, pre ordering for that many kids and and then so the Saturday after Thanksgiving it will be at all three Walmart locations. We'll be at Bass Pro taking monetary donations and new toys. And it just kind of starts a process, and then people come in, and they uh, they actually apply for the program. And then that takes about a two-week process there, and then we takes another week to bag the toys. And it's just amazing to see. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but yeah. you need to oh, see yeah. it. It's, it's amazing have. to see. It's like a little miniature Walmart. And they work, uh, look, they work 16, 18 hours a day bagging these toys yeah. to get it ready. And then uh, we pick the Friday uh, usually it's a Friday, and then we all show up, and they deliver these toys. That's and uh, and the, the best ones are the one the deputies come in and they say, "Hey, look, I was last night. I had to arrest this guy, and uh, he had a family. They're needy. We want to we want to bring the kid. I want to bring those toys to those kids. Yeah, because the deputy knows these kids maybe seen him in a bad light, right? right. And uh, and it gives them an opportunity to go back and say, "Look, I'm not such a bad guy." Uh, what have you, and, and that really is rewarding to me. Yeah, to 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 see that, and 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 the only story that I like to tell because I try to be real private with people's personal lives, so sure. I don't want to put their business on the street. But sure. the most rewarding time for me was uh, my wife had this little girl come in with her mom. I think she was about either seven or nine in in that in that age, and she looked at the little girl and said, "What do you want Santa Claus to bring you for Christmas?" And she said the little girl just kind of looked around and she said, she leaned over and her mom sitting beside her, she kind of whispered, she goes, if he would just bring my mom a Christmas tree, it would be the best Christmas ever. Mm. Obviously, we went and bought a Christmas tree, yeah. right? Yeah. And, uh, wow. But those are the type of people you're helping. It's like yeah. these kids understand that, you know, mama can't afford this and they even put in mom before them. Sure. So those are the kind of people you're helping, yeah. and it's, so it's just a, it's just a great program, and we could not do that program, Jim, if it wasn't for these businesses in this parish, the citizens of this parish, uh, they keep that program ticking because all that is is self money that we raised, and every now and then we'll do a fundraiser, but normally we don't have to do a fundraiser for Crusade. Yeah, no, nah. we get we get we get that many donations, and people believe in the program, and it's just rewarding uh, to to be able to do that. It really is, and and it also, um, you know, I've given uh, where I could for many years to that program, 
And uh, one thing that I really enjoy doing from a citizen perspective is interacting with the deputies during mm-hmm. that time. And and uh, they're at all the Walmarts and several other locations in the area. So check that out. And you mentioned, uh, well, you mentioned college. Look, I got three girls at LSU. <laughs> well, two girls and a boy at LSU. And uh, it ain't cheap. No, it's not. And it's you not. have a program, a scholarship that you I offer. Do. That's a huge deal. Um, it is. You, you know, it was uh, the inspiration for that is the Louisiana Sheriff's Association gives away a scholarship. Yep. Each sheriff gets a uh, gets a five hundred dollar scholarship to give to one student in the parish. We have a lot of students here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm like, well, you know, $500 one scholarship, we need to do more. So I kind of started a scholarship fund and it actually kind of took off. And so we've been able to give a whole lot more. I don't even know what the number is, but a lot more scholarships. And I think we average probably 10 or 15 a year. We have so many talented kids here and we have so many that get great scholarships. And, uh, and, you know, every now and then you'll, you'll have one. There's a few success stories where, you know, my, my grandmother's raising me and, you know, I'm, I'm a hard worker. I'm work. I have two jobs, but I'm going to college, and I just need a little help. And to be able to give those scholarships, and then you know, hear from that kid two or three years later, they're still in college. They're fixing to graduate to become nurses. Yeah. And you just had a little small, you know, portion in there that you just kind of helped them. And uh, so, and that was the inspiration behind it. And I just, just, I just couldn't sleep at night knowing we gave one scholarship yeah. to these kids. And and look, God bless the sheriff association. You know, they have sixty four sheriffs to try to you know put these uh, this money toward. Sure. So, uh, but we just have so many giving people here in our parish too. Yeah, we really do. And uh, and just another another example of your community involvement. And all of those sorts of things, and that's important for for a sheriff's office to to maintain in touch with that community. You've right. done a great job of that over the years, uh, and have have been accessible, which is important. Yes, and uh, and your deputies also accessible. Uh, you mentioned you mentioned your children, of course. You and your wife Erica, you have two children, Abigail and Toby. Right. Uh, and uh, when you run for office, which you know. One thing about your job is it's different than, say, my job. I don't mm-hmm. have to be reelected every four years. Right, you know, right. uh, you do. And and uh, when you run for office, it means your family's kind of also running for office, right? right. Yep. Everybody's got to buy in. Everybody's got to be on board. Uh, it, it's it's something that's uh, it's, it's a lot on the family, yeah. and, uh, but you have to have their support. And uh, Erica's always supported my, my decisions. Well, I don't say she always supported my decisions. <laughs> She went uh, but no, anyway. she's always she always stood beside me, and you yeah. know she she's a wife, and uh, the kids, uh, they were kind of young when we started out, but they uh, are are very you know proud to to sure. be involved, and and they love the sheriff's office like anybody else, and yeah, they've kind of been brought up in the in the political world. Uh, yes. So to speak, and and uh, so it's it's uh, really nice to have a family that believes in you and yeah. and understands what your mission is. It really is, and uh, and you mentioned your faith earlier, and I want to talk about that for a okay. second. Now, um, how critical would you say your faith uh, in God has been in your success? You know, you you mentioned you're in law enforcement, and mm-hmm. you see a lot of bad things. Faith is an important part of that, right? Uh, it it really is. You know, look, I I'm I've always believed that, you know, Christianity is is obviously a sign of hope. Yeah. And so if you look at our units, we actually have a um a badge number on it and a lot of people think it's the deputy's badge. It's called it's 134. Yeah. Well, 134 is actually Romans 134. Yeah. And in that verse it uh, tells you how we are servants of God. And uh, we protect you from the wrongdoers. Yeah. Uh, but we are God's servant first. And I really believe in that. And I believe that we uh, are just not far off of a a pastor. Okay. But let me explain that. They deal with a lot of stuff. And they, are, they uh, are, have opportunities just like we do in law enforcement. But normally when we deal with people, they're at their bottom. Yeah. And I feel like that we have an opportunity to change a life if, you know, whenever – we uh, get to a scene. I mean, we're in the middle of, of people's family affairs when it comes to uh, uh, they're going through a divorce or civil issues and all this kind of stuff. So it's really, to me, rewarding to be able to, to maybe turn someone to, to that and uh, to, to having faith. And I've just always, uh, you know, I was brought up that way. And in the yeah. old story, they say your grandma drug you to church. 
And uh, yes, I was drugged to church every day. <laughs> um, and I remember uh, we w- I went to Satsum Baptist with my grandmother, and and if you didn't act right, she'd have you know make you pick your switch and all that kind of stuff. Yes, but you know. Um, it was just something that I was brought up in, you know, I was brought up in the Southern, Southern Baptist uh, family and uh, we're now uh, members of Live Oak Church. It used to be Live Oak Methodist. Now it's Live Oak Church. And yep. Eric and I was married there and, you know, I've, I've been baptized. I was actually baptized at Beach Ridge Baptist Church, um, which uh, is on 63. I don't think it's called Beach Ridge anymore. And it's uh, over kind of North Walker, North Livingston area. Yeah. And so, you know, look, it, it, it's uh, in what we do every day. Um, I make a lot of decisions sure. and some of these in all our decisions mostly affect people's lives. And when you have to make a decision on maybe what to do with a deputy that has done something against policy, mm-hmm. uh, he's even maybe broken the law, whatever, you know, you have to pray about those decisions. Yeah. And my decisions are going to be prayed about. Yeah. And, uh, and I look, I always ask God, I said, look, please treat, treat me like an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> slap me, get my attention, something, make sure that I'm making the right decision here. And because uh, I, if I can't sleep at night, I know I didn't make the right decision. Right. Right. And you got to have a peace with that. And I just believe that um, I'm That's here right. because God wanted me to be here. Yeah. He's given me a lot of visions that I have uh, continued to, to just like the training facility. That was a vision from a long time ago that came to pass. And uh, I believe that you, you, you have those visions and you need to, you need to, focus on them so I agree. look i have no problem standing up for our country standing up for god and family and our constitution i'm, I'm really big on that and yeah. that's what we were founded on and 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 since we're on this topic this is something that really bothers me yeah you have a lot of we have a big election coming up mm-hmm you got a lot of people who are going to have new seats, right? You have a lot of parish council seats that are vacant. Mm-hmm. You have room for a new parish president, mm-hmm. senators, representatives. We have a lot of those, okay? Hold them accountable. Yeah, They should stand up for God. They should stand up for our country. They should stand up for family values. They should stand up for our freedom of this country. And a lot of times they don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Ask those questions and make sure that that's what you're voting for. Because I'm telling you, we're in a time now that this country is 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 in some in some trouble. And uh, if you don't think the border's real, folks, it's real. We've seen it here in Livingston Parish. I mean, we've seen a population increase. Uh, we see in these the the drugs we're seeing on the street is not normal here. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things going on here, and uh, this is a very important time. So there's gonna be a lot of new people elected, except for your sheriff. Yeah, it'll be the same guy. That's right. That's been working hard and, and yeah. boots on the ground, and, and we're going to continue to do what we've always done here, and that is serve and protect this parish. Yeah, and uh, and keep this parish what it is and a safe place to live, work, and raise your family. That's right. And so, please hold your your public officials accountable to that, um, because if you want somebody that's going to fight for your freedom and fight for the right things of what you believe in. You got to ask those questions and, and hold them accountable, and, uh, really and that's do. that's that's one of the things. So, I have no problem speaking about Jesus. I have no problem speaking about anything, and so I, I think that that's obviously what's going on in our uh, in our society. And they ask, you know, why things are happening the way they happen. And I said, well, you start taking prayer out of school, you start taking prayer out of this, and prayer out of that. Yeah, these kind of things happen. I agree a hundred percent, and uh, and I also agree with you. A very important election this go round, it is, and uh, and people really need to pay attention. Uh, and I'll just say this: uh, you know, don't look. Social media for me uh, uh, has been a good tool for business, bad mm-hmm. tool for getting. Uh, inaccurate information which there's right, a lot right. of it out there and yeah. a lot of those keyboard warriors and and folks of that nature and you know we don't even acknowledge i don't even acknowledge them anymore i learned just not to engage right, which is right. hard <laughs> um but i've learned so uh you know make sure you're making your own decision don't let somebody right. else make a decision for you or tell you something uh that it, that is inaccurate make right. your own decision Approach one of these candidates, whoever it may be, and ask them. Ask them. They'll, yeah. they'll answer it, whatever question you got. Do your research. Do your research. Uh, yeah, that's right. Great advice. And and uh, 
look, you've done a lot over your career. We've talked about it 30 years. New 911 Center. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, two new substations. Right. We have one in Walker. Great we have, right, right. We have yeah. one in Walker, and we're in the process of building one on Tickfile River. Those Marine guys have never had anywhere to actually have an office. And yeah. so we're very proud to have that location. We actually even uh, have a, a, a one of the slip areas for the, the – Springfield Fire Department because yeah. they're on a the river. And if you're not on a river in Livingston Parish, you're not understanding our waterways here. We have more navigable waterways in Livingston Parish than anywhere in Louisiana. Yeah. We have a huge water life. Yes. I mean, these boats on the weekends are just packed. And yeah. uh, those Marine guys work every weekend yeah. and day in and day out. And now it's getting to even during the week. And um, it, it's, it's a, it's a, it's becoming a big thing in, in that area. So, a lot of people don't even realize what's going on down there. But there's a lot of people that do. Sure. There's a lot of traffic that comes on the water. And look, it's just not Livingston Parish. There's people from all over the state of Louisiana comes to those waterways. And a lot of them have vacation homes and retirement homes yeah. uh, on that water. And uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun times on the water, too. There are a lot of good eateries on, on the water. And so it was nice to be able to build that uh, station. And I have two more that I'm working on that I want to be able to accomplish. I'd love to have us a substation somewhere around the French Settlement area, Marpaul. Yep. Yep. Uh, we need one down that way, and we also need one in the North Denham Watson area. Yeah. Uh, so those those are my future projects that I'm I'm focusing on, and of course we have the one at the Walker building, which is a Walker Town Hall on the third floor. Yeah. And we kind of picked that because it was centrally located, and it gives us a little more room and and the deputies really are, are getting some good use out of it. So it's, uh, it's, it's nice to be able to have those and, and be able to build upon what we're going to be doing here at the parish in the future. Very good. And, uh, and you just mentioned, you know, you are a forward thinker, which I really like. And, and, uh, you're constantly advancing as technology advances. And look, one of your, I mean, for me, I just absolutely love this so much so that I talked about it on, uh, another podcast that I do that is a, a global podcast. So you're worldwide famous now because uh, <laughs> I brought up the Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office app that you just released that yes. is my favorite. Oh. I probably told everybody I've ran into, you need to download the app. Yeah. Man, that it's it's just great because at the palm of your hands you have so much information in this robust mm-hmm. app. And we want to we want to continue to grow on that app. And yeah. uh, you know, when we first released it you know you got a lot of weather updates yeah yeah well <laughs> we'll take those and you know the weather updates is what we kind of started with and yeah so now we actually do it our news releases and we're actually in the process of yeah. uh of training some of the dispatchers because what i want to do is have that 24-hour coverage for people and what i'm working toward is i want to know before i get on i-12 if the traffic's backed up right or rerouted you know if you go to your subdivision there's four Police cars there, you can look on the app and say, oh, were they there because they had, you know, this or this going on. Now, some stuff we can't put out, mm-hmm. but I think if anything is a danger to your neighborhood or anything sure. you should be concerned about, we need to be able to get more communication uh, to our citizens. So that's kind of where that app's going. Yeah. And it'll get bigger and better as we go. And so I think the big thing we're working toward obviously eventually we'll have another disaster, yeah, whether you sure. like it or not, it's coming. Yeah. And so, um, we're just working those tools to be able to stay more in touch with our citizens. And I'm very proud of that app. It's just yeah. going to get bigger and better as we go. I am too. And, and, uh, if you want to download that app, we'll link the, uh, the download to the app in the description and mm-hmm. you can learn more about it, download it. It'll keep you updated. And it's got so many features and tools that you'll find interesting. And just another, another example of forward thinking mm-hmm. with the sheriff's, Thank you. sheriff's department. I do want to get into a couple of other things before we wrap up we've been going like an hour and 10 minutes but look (laughs) i mean 30 years you know you can only do what you can do one of the things that is really making the facebook buzz right now Mm. is the breast cancer rap police unit oh lord is it supposed to get out yet oh Uh, it's out somebody (laughs) saw it and put a picture out there and but let me tell you everybody loves it and my wife has spent uh her entire life actually in breast cancer research so i showed that to her and i said uh tell all your friends you know, right, right. Uh, so it just a be- a beautiful, uh, neat little uh, police unit that is pink and and yeah. uh, and so important. 
it is, is and, and so I'm a and, and me. I, I love to the point out where where who needs the credit here, and uh, yeah. so Chief Dufran, yeah. who's the Police chief of Livingston kind of started something last year with uh, a fundraiser for the breast cancer awareness. Asked us to get involved, asked us to be a part of it. And I noticed he had like some pink badges. Yeah. Had a few things put on his unit or whatever. And, you know, me, I'm, I'm like, we can do better than that. <laughs> you know, we want to do something big and better. So, of course, one of the things we don't want is we don't want our taxpayer thinking, oh, you wasted all this money on, on this unit. Yeah. And was able to get a sponsor. Yeah. It was actually Baton Rouge General. That uh, sponsored this this vehicle helped us wrap it, and yeah. it's uh, it's it's very pink. Yeah, <laughs> like maybe Pepto Bismol pink. Yeah, it'll catch your eye. Uh, it'll catch your <laughs> eye. But at the end of the day, it's about a good cause. It really and is. And so we're uh, we're getting ready to kind of start pushing that. We're gonna you're gonna see it at some football games. I actually think that uh, the Live Oak Denim game that's coming up next week or yeah. maybe two Fridays. We'll uh, actually be there. We're going to be giving out some pink rally towels. We're going to oh, have our unit. And I think Livingston PD is going to have a few things on their unit. They're going to be there. You'll start seeing uh, some deputies with some pink badges. I yeah. think uh, we, we, I bought some of those for them. And so we uh, we encourage everybody if, uh, to, to get involved in that, make a donation. We're going to actually have a, a QR code on that unit. Uh, you can actually don't do this while you're driving, but you happen to be beside a red light and you're driving. You're not driving. You're actually parked. You can scan it and actually uh, make a donation. Wow. That's uh, awesome. So those yeah. are the little things that we're trying to accomplish, and we want to make sure we do what's best. But I know there's a lot of people in this parish. I know I have some in my office that's actually dealt with breast cancer. Yeah. And so we just want to do what we can because the com- this community here in Livingston, we, we believe in giving back. Sure and we do. believe in, in the cause, but you wouldn't believe uh, how many people, people's family here has been touched by that. Yeah. And just like the St. Jude, I mean, we have a lot of kids in our parish that's been to St. Jude, and a lot of yeah. people don't understand how many. And you really, you, 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 you hear about St. Jude, you understand St. Jude until you really hits home when you have somebody close to you. Oh yeah. That actually goes through that. And uh, we've had several friends that actually have been through that, um, that horrible, uh, probably process, but at the end of the day, you just hear St. Jude makes it so much better, and it just makes you feel so much better when you get there. And I've walked through St. Jude several times, well. and you talked about, uh, you know, uh, my my faith and 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 God and stuff. The only way you can, if you've never been to St. Jude, the only way I can describe it. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. It's time for another season of The Palmetto Porch, an original podcast from Discover South Carolina. I'm Devin Whitmire. Join me as I get to the heart of what makes South Carolina such a great place to visit by speaking to the locals who make it so special. Premiering December 5th, find The Palmetto Porch wherever you get your podcasts. And for more information about our show, visit scpalmettoporch.com. Have you ever walked into like a big, big church yeah. that when you walk in, you feel the presence of God right. as soon as you enter the doors? Man. That's yes. what St. Jude's feels like. Yes. As soon as you walk in, there's so many miracles going on. You're just surrounded by it, and you can't help but feel it. I, um, I, you know, I, I agree 100%, and it, it'll change you. Oh, it'll yeah. change who yeah. you are just going through that facility and seeing those kids. Yeah. Well, look, yeah. on, on the, the, the pink car, uh, the, the unit will be out. You know, you know, contact us if you have something going on. You want us to try to make it by your business. Look, and look, this is for the whole month of October. Yeah. Uh, not no political scheme for me. We, we right. kind of planned this the whole year. We really want to give back if, you know, Anytime in October you want to do something, let us know. If we can fit you in, we will absolutely, uh, you know, come to your business. And that's what these guys are going to be doing. And it's a, it's a great um, outreach for, for our office to be able to get in the community and, and, and get involved. Yeah, I agree. And uh, so check that out. Uh, we want to talk about, and as I said, that's kind of making its rounds on Facebook. May not, may not be the official announcement, but somebody yeah. out there got it's it. It's all good. Uh, so... Uh, in addition to that, you know, and we brought up 
Facebook and and how you got to be careful what you read and and listen to folks. And that's Jim Chapman saying this, not not Sheriff Ford. But uh, I see misinformation out there all the time on many different right, subjects right. and many different people. Um, you know, and I want to address those if that's okay with you. Just sure, a, a sure. few of them and. Uh, one of them is is uh, let, let's talk about there was a deputy that uh, some mif- misinformation from maybe a news source was being spread and mm-hmm. and uh, uh, you want to address that a little bit and sure um, so uh, it was a while back we had a, a, a news station that actually came out and wanted to do a story and it was about a deputy and, and look I mentioned the deputy's name only because he said you know we can mention his name. And as Deputy Richard Foster, he worked for me, uh, works in our prison, and he was accused of a molestation of his of his kids. And so this news uh, outlet actually came out and said, you know, we want to uh, you to make a comment on on this uh, certain situation. And so I got with his attorney, uh, which is Glenn Westmoreland, mm-hmm. worked for Sherman Mack. And we make sure we explain this process was, A, my deputies investigated these allegations. It was unfounded. Yeah. The FBI investigated these accusations. It was unfounded. The Louisiana State Police investigated these accusations, and they were unfounded. So much so that the judge gave custody to these kids four years ago yeah. and in court because they had been coached yeah. by their mother. Yeah. And that was all in open, said in open court. And uh, so this was very – it was just one of the things. We gave all this information right. to them. This is not a story. And, you know, you don't need to be mentioning this guy's name. Yeah. I don't like mentioning his name because he has kids Yeah, with the same last name. And it doesn't – it's not hard for another kid to figure out who's who. And so I'm very protective of victims. I'm very protective of making sure we get justice. And sometimes the integrity of that case is what you which is what you're protecting, obviously. And and uh, I was very upset that they would do a story that didn't had no meaning to it. And they knew this when mm-hmm. they ran the story. Mm-hmm. So there was new allegations came up during that time frame. I said, okay, we'll do it this way. How about the Louisiana State Police? We'll let them investigate it. I'm not going to touch it. Yeah, they did. Unfounded. Yeah, this yeah. guy has been a good deputy. Uh, and uh, he's been a good father, and he has no reason to be going through this. Yeah. And uh, however, sometimes fake news wants to paint a picture, mm-hmm. and whatever falls in their narrative. Mm-hmm. And and if you watch that story, it was right before qualifying, and they wanted to bring in another deputy mm-hmm. that was arrested years uh, years ago, almost four years ago, uh, for ag- um, accusations that he did. Yeah. And uh, he deserved to be arrested. And now we're talking about Mr. Perkins here, mm-hmm. who uh, not only was he arrested, but convicted basically life in prison. Uh, if I had it my way, he'd be buried under prison. Absolutely. Obviously, we can't do that. Yeah. But, you know, and even in that situation, you know, a lot of people wanted me to talk, wanted me to say certain things. Well, A, it's not my investigation. It was the Attorney General's investigation, which we helped with. Right. You know, we worked sure. alongside them uh, when they did the search warrant. We was there. We, you know, received a lot of uh, evidence that actually belonged to the sheriff's office. Yeah. Uh, our guys went through that evidence, and we gave them a lot of evidence that was used in the prosecution, uh, which at the end of the day really didn't have to because he actually went ahead and, and, and pled yeah. and uh, committed, you know, said he was guilty or what have you, and now he's where he needs to be. So it was it, like to me it's not even a story, but you're doing all this for what? Yeah, you know, um, you know this guy. If there was anything at all in the career when I was here that would have been brought where he had any kind of criminal accusations, obviously to have been dealt with. Uh, but none of that was actually there, right. and so I'm just very thankful that the AG's office was able to get what they got and and move it forward, and we were able to investigate this guy and put him away. So, um, and, you know, back to the other deputy, it's just, it's a shame that they would, they would do that. So, but I want the, the people that are listening to this to know this, there is anything ever comes through the sheriff's office, anything, any kind of complaint, we look at it, we're going to investigate it. And one of the things I always put before fake news and keyboard warriors, and I'm like you, I'm not going to get into a war with them because, yeah. uh, it just, it, it's, it's not what I do. But I am going to protect our victims. I'm going to protect our identity. I'm going to do whatever I can to protect the integrity of the case so we can get justice. 
And if I got to take a few bullets for that, I'll take it. Yeah. If I got to take the hits, I'll take it. And uh, another people say, well, you're not being transparent. Well, I am, but I also got to protect these victims. Right. I don't want them, their identification to get out. And look, we in, live in a world today where everybody has a cell phone and it's so easy to figure out who Jim Chapman's kids are. Yeah. Just by your name. Yeah. And, you know, all our kids, they know who the parents are. And it just, look, we have enough bullying issues that we're dealing with in our schools and other things. So I'm going to protect those cases. And, uh, and look, you go look at our track record. We've made some really good cases and we can continue to do that. And, Look, my guys have, have done a lot. If you uh, just, just talking about crime, five million dollars of illegal narcotics taken off our street already. Five million. Five million dollars in illegal narcotics taken off of our streets here in Livingston. Another twenty million dollars, twenty million. Yeah. In stolen items returned to the citizens of Livingston Parish. That isn't because we letting grass grow under our feet, folks. It's That's because right. we work hard. We believe in what we're doing here. These deputies. They live here. Their kids go to school here. And I'm going to do everything I can to protect our kids, protect this parish, and keep it a safe place. We are not Baton Rouge. Look, I have great friends over there. I know a lot of business owners over there, That's even my supporters. And, uh, and Baton Rouge is a good place, but they have an issue over there. They're having some serious crime problems. We don't have that here. Last year, I had one homicide. One. You hear that? One, y'all. <laughs> Since I've been sharing, that's unbelievable. Every year, I mean, we have four one year. The most I've ever had in one year, I think, is thirteen, or might be fourteen. But I think it was thirteen in one year. Yeah, most of those are domestic related. Yeah, some of them are going to be drug related shootings, and so we just don't deal with the gang violence and and the things that other people are dealing with. And uh, yes, we do have crime here, um, but most of it's going to be related to drugs and drug related crimes, and that's why we've created different divisions. Um, we recently, uh, when I ver- took office, we, we created that burglary and theft unit because that's mostly what we deal with here. Mm-hmm. That is the top crime in Livingston Paris is burglary and theft. Yeah. Which is linked to drugs. Sure. Right? And so those guys work so hard. And, and look, I came up in a world, when I was in investigations, I worked everything. I might work uh, a forfeiture, forfeiture crime, of, of, of uh, I'm sorry, a, for- a forgery crime. I may work a homicide. I may work a work a burglary the next day. I may have to go deal with neighbors with a civil issue. I mean, we did everything. Yeah. And to be able to take these de- detectives now, and they actually have uh, expertise in domestic violence, expertise in, in drug cases, expertise in burglaries, expertise in homicide. And uh, and and then we have the, you know the, the sex crimes. We have expertise in that to make sure that those detectives make good cases. And look, those cases aren't easy. Yeah, I talk yeah. about this uh, quite frequently, and I just was talking about it yesterday with somebody. Those those uh, positions when it comes to sex crimes are usually the ones that burn out quicker than anybody. Yeah, they're having to look at images and things every day. Yeah, uh, some of my IT guys. Um, they 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 signed up to be an IT person, right? Right. But they wind up helping investigate and dumping phones. And it, with that, there's images and involving these crimes. And they're like, "Man, we ain't signed up for this." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I can't I can't do this no more. I, I get it, but unfortunately, that's our job. And so you got to be you you got to be careful. And so sometimes those cases are very difficult. They're always very difficult cases. And there's times where you're relying on a four year old with no physical evidence to convict someone that's maybe 30 or 40 years old. Wow. And it's stressful because, A, you know we did it. And all you have is that kid's testimony. Yeah. And now you got to try to put something together that may have happened to when they were two years old. Right. Or you have somebody that came in from 30 years ago, they were a victim of this. So them cases are very um, difficult. Uh, but if you um, you look at it, We've made some 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 of those cases that have been very challenging. We've made some some really good cases and have some really good prosecutions. I have 291 sex offenders living in Livingston Parish. 291. Five of them is kind of what I call ITW in to win. Yeah, they have warrants on them. We can't find them. Yeah. We will. And uh, and so I get more complaints from those 291 people. Than one of my guys. Yeah. Than any other division in the office. Imagine that. Because we keep them in compliance. Mm-hmm. If they don't change their address within 24 hours of them moving, they're going to jail. 
Yeah. And they don't like it. Yeah. And I'm sorry, you was convicted in court. You have a you now have to follow the rules and those rules for you is a law. Yeah. And so those are the kind of things that that we we take all that serious. And so and I've said this and I'll say it again, Jim, I will put my deputies 358 up against anybody when it comes to investigations, fighting crime and just serving the community. Yeah. They are good at what they do. They believe in what they do. And obviously I have my 10 or 15% that can be teenagers sometimes, right? Yeah. Headaches. Yeah. Who? <laughs> but but they believe in serving their community. I think we do a really I know we do a good job with that. I have yeah. a great administration team I'm surrounding myself with. And uh, and I know that what we do is 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 good things, you know. We're not perfect. We're not. Um but I I encourage everybody to call me if they have a complaint. I I call everybody back. Sometimes I get really busy. I may not call you back for a week, but you're going to talk to somebody that's going to be handling that situation as soon as you call. Yeah. And those are the things that we have in place. And so we we take everything very serious. We always have. You can look at our stats. We have uh, we get we get our bad guy, and to be able to sit here and tell you my entire career, we have uh, since I uh, even before I was here, when we have one unsolved big deal here and that's yeah. Barbara Blunt. Yeah. And that's the only thing we have that's really that's an unsolved case for yeah. us when it comes to a homicide. We know she was murdered. There's no yeah. doubt that she was. And so and, and and that has bothered and haunted me for years. And we look at that case not just once a year when it's the anniversary in May. We look at yeah. it almost once a month and we continue to get tips on that. And and that's because of a lot of people put that information out. I know that's you know right. Woody Overton's oh, yeah. big advocate that he's helped us a lot with that case and, and uh, he's continued to help us with that case. And we're gonna solve that case. Yeah. Before I retire as sheriff, and I don't know when that's gonna be um, I'm going to solve that case. That case is very solvable, and it's, it's going to happen. Well, it won't be anytime soon, I can uh, tell you no, that, no. in my opinion. Thank you. Um, I want to say this, and and just two quick things, uh, and we'll wrap it up here. But I think this is important. So thank you all for sticking with us. We've been going a little while, but this is important. I want you to hear it, because this speaks to what you're uh, – really who you are as a person, Sheriff Ford, in, in my opinion, and a lot of other people's. Uh, there was a Facebook post, and it says, uh, on September 20th, 2022, Stephen had a very serious and complicated surgery with his spinal cord, and this is Sloan Stephen Erty. After almost two years of uh, in surgery, the post-op consultation left my family facing uh, absolute uncertainty. My first phone call was directly from our sheriff, or to our sheriff, rather. Later that night, I mean late like 11 p.m. while sitting in the trauma trauma critical care unit at OLOL, the nurse came in and said there were two men waiting outside to come and see Stephen, not knowing who. And after a long day, I said, send them back. When they entered the room, my heart sank, eyes filled up with tears and solidified what I already knew to be true about our sheriff. Our sheriff, Jason Ord, and chaplain Daryl Courtney walked to my husband's bedside, held his hand, and began to pray. They went out of their way to come to us, to be there for us, and pray with us. The following weeks and months were challenging and trying, but there were never any hesitation in his voice. Take care of your family, and we will take care of the rest. I can assure you that each and every one of his deputies and their families from the bottom to the top are his family, and he are ours. He is ours. I'm proud and honored to serve for and work for our sheriff. I say this uh, with... Uh, I say this because he's not afraid to go to boots on the ground and walk right alongside any of us. That's huge. Yeah. That's I, guess for, I should have read that before you did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it's to me, I would imagine if I was in your place, that's about the biggest compliment you can get. It is. Uh, look, I'll, there's no doubt. I, I love my deputies. They, uh, they do a great job and, and they are a part of a family. You know, we yeah. call it the LPSO family. And, you know, we, I do everything I can to take care of them. Uh, so they'll do everything they, everything they can to take care of our community. Yeah. And I believe that that's, that's what we do here. Yeah, it really is. And, and you mentioned it earlier, but Romans 13, four for he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid for he does not bear the sword in vain for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Mm-hmm. That's you, brother. 
Well, I appreciate that. I love it. And uh, look, early voting, uh, the 30th, tomorrow. Yeah, I'm dropping this tomorrow. today. And, uh, and of course, the the uh, the actual election day is the 14th, I believe. October it, 14th. Yeah, October the 14th yes. to start Saturday. And, and, and I just want to say this, Jim. Yes, sir. I, I said it earlier. We have really important elections coming up. And yeah. uh, and I'm concerned about one election, and that's the sheriff race. Yeah. Um, everybody knows that my brother Jeff is running for, for parish president. Yeah. We have a process in this parish. Yeah. And the process is the people will go and they will vote for who they want to vote for. And I've always said this. Whoever the people elect is who the sheriff will work with. And so they'll make the right decision. Uh, do your homework. Do, you know, study everything. Make sure you elect your right senator, your right representative, your right parish president. Elect the same sheriff. And we're going to do the best job we've always – we've always done a good job. We're going to continue to do the best job we can. Yeah. And moving forward, we have great things that will happen uh, in this parish, and we are continuing to grow. We've already did a lot of great things – when you do your research, you'll see that, and we have so many great things coming. And so just uh, look, go vote, and don't not vote and complain. You can't, to me, if you don't vote, you can't complain. That's so right. Get yeah. out or there, assume, vote, you know, or assume everything's okay, yeah, or it's going to be fine. And, they don't need know, my vote. Right. Yeah, look, everybody to, needs your vote that you want to support. That's right. And look, and so you know, there, there's, there's two locations now, and I don't want people to get confused. So the library on Eden Church Road in Denham Springs, right on 190 and Eden Church Road, and a roundabout, there's a library. On the back side of the library is absentee voting Yeah, here on the west side. That's been a big deal for us. We did it for the first time. We had a good turnout uh, for absentee voting. It's a lot more convenient. They don't want to drive all the way to Livingston. Right. But if you do want to go to Livingston, it's by the newest assessor's office. So it's out on 63, the new registrar voter's office, right beside the assessor's office yeah. in Livingston. Uh, that's also absentee voting. So that starts Saturday. Uh, of course, will be closed on Sunday. It starts back open on Monday and goes all the way through the following Saturday. And so that is uh, whenever it's time to vote. So get out there and early vote. And I know there's two big things going on on Election Day and right now. And I'm very jealous that I'm not one of the guys in the woods with my bow <laughs> hunting right now. Uh, so when I got up this morning, yeah. it was nice and cool. But no, we're, we're, we're boots on the ground right now. But... I know your husbands and even some of these ladies like to go hunting, but you need yeah. to go vote. And October the 14th, we have a big LSU game. Yeah. We have a home game, and they're playing Auburn. Everybody's going to be going to tailgate. Go vote before you get out to Baton Rouge because we all know you get out there to tailgate, and it turns uh, yeah. into a really good game, and the next thing you know, the polls are closed, and it's all, all great. That's right. We have so many, avail- the, 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 so many availabilities for you to go and vote. Use that. I mean, yes. go do the early voting. It's very convenient. And, again, if you're not voting, you shouldn't have a right to complain. That's right. <laughs> I've said that my entire life. I, You know, it's a, it's a true statement. And uh, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for all you have done, not only in your 12 years as sheriff, but your 30 years in law enforcement. Thank you. Uh, it takes a special person, y'all, to go out there every day and protect and serve. And look, these days, uh, the guys that are behind that badge, they're legit. They, they're doing it because they love it, and they're mm-hmm. doing it because they want to protect you. And you lead that charge, and I appreciate it. Um, and I know the parish does, too. And thank you. Uh, so thank you very much. It's been an honor. I kept you for an hour 30 uh, and I appreciate you hanging in with me. No and, problem. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, sure. And it, please share this. If you hear it, uh, share it out there and, and uh, spread the word on, uh, on this podcast. And until next time, I'm Jim Chapman reminding you, love your community, support local business and current sheriffs and yeah. keep leading. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey y'all, Darius Rucker here. You know, a lot of people ask me, what inspires your music? And one of the big things is a strong sense of place. That's why I love my home state of South Carolina and want to share the awesome things it has to offer. From the beautiful mountains down to the sunny coast, it's got it all. Not to mention two of my personal favorites, great golf and amazing food. Come see why I love this place. Visit discoversouthcarolina.com. With Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, 
Sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.